Today I'm in Tennessee at Mayfield Pastures. This is the home farm of farmer Charles Mayfield. And this behind me is one of the enterprises he's doing. Eggs, eggs on grass, but that's not the only enterprise he's doing. So let's focus in this video just on eggs. How's it work? How's it pay off economically for him? And how's it fit into the bigger picture of the context of everything else he's doing on farm? That's what this one's all about, eggs. Stay tuned for that, coming up. So Charles, you have a layer operation out here. You have 40 birds, but you're also doing turkeys. You're also doing pastured poultry. You're also doing pigs. What's the point of the layer operation? How does that fit into the greater scheme of things from a business sense for you? Uh, well, the business, I guess on the business side, uh, the biggest thing is sort of seeding new customers. We have eggs all the time. Eggs are easy. It's a low entry point for a lot of folks to to, to try our, our products, uh, but the biggest reason we got them is sanitation, uh, running them behind the pigs. Uh, we'll see the cows later today, and so just just kind of keeping the fields uh, clean, and, uh, and they're very kid-friendly. We've got two young kids. I don't really worry about them getting bowled over by uh, by a, a hen, laying hen. So, yeah, it's a small it's a small operation. This is sort of just where we started. Yeah. Uh, well, was, given where you're at with your experience here, do you see this potentially scaling up? Do you think it's worthwhile looking at it just on a micro scale? Does the macro make sense? I think the macro makes sense with help. Um, with the other enterprises going on, uh, I've got a 16-year-old kid right now. I'm sort of mentoring, interning a little bit, and he's mentioned being interested. But um, I think it definitely makes sense to scale up from where we are here. Uh, I could probably put 300 birds in this same tractor. So your, your time and motion studies, the labor, the time to move it, all of that basically stays the same. You know, there's, there's not a lot of difference between 10 chickens and 100 chickens. So uh, economies of scale, definitely. Um, but you got to be able to move those eggs. So Totally. And what do, you, what do you move them for down here? We're in Tennessee, Athens, Tennessee. What can you get for a dozen eggs? Uh, you can get anywhere from, I'd say, five to seven dollars. I mean, if you go to the store here, there's some really nice eggs grown out of Chattanooga that are, uh, I think, retail for about seven. And so I'm asking six for mine and not really getting too many bats of the eye. Uh, most of our customers aren't in Athens, though. Yeah. Most of them. At Chattanooga, Knoxville, Atlanta. Uh, Cleveland a little bit. I mean, we've got 21 uh, buying club members, so that's not a lot of people. But um, but the eggs are great. I use my, my insurance business. I'll take a take a dozen eggs when like I go meet with card, a right? Oh man, it, you know it leaves an impression. There, nobody ever forgets the egg guy. In, and in so, terms of eggs, what do you think you got into them? Um, no labor, a couple bucks. Uh, I'd say 220, yeah, 250 somewhere in there with no labor. Uh, I'd say all in, and that's sort of prob the problem with this is it's only 40. So the labor and everything, is, it, it, again, it wouldn't really change much. But uh, yeah, I'd say, uh, I'd say it, if I were going to be super aggressive, $3 a dozen. Come here, Red. <laughs> this is my favorite. He, he, he lets me pick him up. Hi, sir. How so this are is, you This today? is Red. Scott always likes me to pick up red so he can pet him. So Darby, you don't like Rhode Island Reds? They're usually pretty mean. This guy, he's, 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 I think what helps is he's number two in the pecking order. <laughs> the, the black Osterlorp is top, top dog around here. Looking at your egg mobile here, it's one of the nicer egg mobiles that I've seen on a lot of farms and in videos and on Instagram. I love the design. It's totally self-contained. Like you have your energizer mounted on here. You have your water source mounted on here. So you can just tow it down the field. You're just picking up the feeder and the ladder, move the fence and you're a go. What do you like about this design? What don't you like? And how? what considerations would you suggest to people if they're looking to build something? Uh, well, let's start with the dislikes because we, we did build it. So, you know, it's like building a house. The minute you're done, you look around, and you're like, well, I'd change that, change that. It, it feels a little too high for me. Um, we've got small kids and sort of, and we do have to step up into the track, uh, into the egg mobile uh, to gather eggs. So it's a little high, uh, but I do, it, I mean, predation wise, that's a great thing. Um, I love the angled roof. I mean, I, you guys uh, know that a lot of the stuff I've modeled is after Joel Salatin, and he, he always talks about a flat roof because it's easier. And uh, so when we were building this one, I'm a tall guy too, so I wanted to 
make sure I had enough headroom, but the angled roof, and I haven't mounted it yet, but I'm, the, the idea is to mount a small uh, gutter system on the back of this thing just to capture all the rainwater. Um, I have to refill that bucket every now and then, but uh, with the rain we've had, I'd never have to touch it. And so it just, it takes a chore away. Simplify things down. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I like the design. Um, I'd probably upgrade my door. Um, this is just our best. We actually put all the siding on and then remembered we needed a door, uh, as you can probably tell. But uh, they make the automatic doors. I mean, that's a, that's a, a nightly chore that, uh, especially this time of year, doesn't happen until about 9.15 at night, that they don't all make their way back in there. And so maybe an automated door or something with a, a timer on it would be great. But uh, outside of that, I, I like it. I would, I guess if I were upgrading and scaling up, the only thing I would do different is maybe extend the house and get a uh, pull behind single axle feed buggy right. uh, so that the feed and the, and the tractor are inseparable so that I can, you know, if, if I need to fill that feed box and I'm happy where this is, I've either got to bring feed to the box or I don't have feed, so. But yeah, I love it. And you're using a Brower real feeder here. A lot of people use the hanging bell type feeders. How have you liked this one so far? I've loved the Brower. We, um, uh, it holds a lot of feed uh, and there's almost no waste. Um, you can, they, so it's been here for two days. Their feeder was empty this morning when we got down here and I'm looking around and outside of a little bit that I might have spilled filling it back up, there's no feed on the ground. Uh, they're super lightweight. And, and reasonably indestructible. The price tag's a little high. My dad and I built, um, and I would recommend if you don't want to buy this, but we just used the six inch green PVC pipe um, and, and built a, uh, we just scabbed the top third of it off. Now, don't cut it in half, you want, a, you want a rimmed edge. And it actually holds more feed than the Brower. We took it to about five feet long and capped both ends. The problem with it is, when it's full, it's heavy. I mean, it's, and picking it up in and out of, of like the chicken tractors sort of becomes a chore. I mean, I, it's fine for me, Julie can manage, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, we got this 16 year old kid that's interning with us. Tough. It, it's all he can do to get that thing work out, out on it. it. Yeah, it's a big uh -huh. workout. So they were, they were nice. Um, hey, it's really well looking. So now let's take a look at the back here. Show the Energizer set up, the sure. water set up. So this is your water system you just have 55 gallon drum, gravity feeds down into a rubber pail down here with a float valve on it, and then you got the Salatin trick to keep them out of it, which is brilliant. I love the idea of that. I haven't seen that before. And then the idea eventually will be you just divert your rainwater into there so you don't have to fill it. But right now you just hose fill it up. Just just hose fill it, yep. It gets a little, little spackling if it rains hard enough, but yeah, we just, when I'm, most of the chickens pretty much stay down in this general area and we've got water spigots everywhere so if I'm moving them I'll swing over and fill it up. So here's the back of the chicken or the back of the egg mobile you have your energizer mounted onto it and you just store your feed in the back there? Just store the feed and the uh, calcium in here and uh, fill it up as we need to and yeah the, the, uh, this has worked great the, you have to you really have to pay attention to how you position I've actually moved this location now once from the side to the back and I'm just trying to figure out what's going to work best. Um, ideally, I guess you would park the egg mobile so that you get most of the sun throughout the day and I'm just having a hard time doing that right now. So um, ideally this side is always going to face west because the prevailing wind, it just sort of helps with the wind. but. Um, but yeah, it works great. It's just it, it needs a little bit of a charge right now. And it's running a lot of fence for, for this thing. It doesn't have a big grounding rod either. Right, you see you just have the premier netting running around the perimeter here and no issues with predators, you're saying? I've had no issues with predators. And the, the biggest reason I put the netting up right now is so that sometimes I don't have to come down and close the birds up at night. I, I, I feel okay with them in the netting at night. Um, we've got an English setter dog that's my parents and a labradoodle that's ours and they were they like animals to for dinner 
Um, but early on, uh, we had all these layers in, in fencing like this, and that they both got a really good pop to the nose, mm. and we're around the birds all the time, and it's crazy. The English setter, she'll just come down here with me now, and she'll, if the netting's not up, she'll just climb underneath there and lay down and watch the birds, and they, they coexist very well now, so it's kind of amazing. But Right on. But yeah, we've been really lucky with, <clears throat> with predation, or lack thereof, knock on wood. Um, so we'll take it. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love the idea of it. Looks clean, looks nice, and hopefully it becomes a bigger part of your enterprise if it all works out at the end of the day. I'd like that. We love eggs, and I think it's, a, like I said, it's it's the lowest point of entry for a lot of people to buy your product. So it makes a, it, it makes for a good uh, marketing tool. So here you have an inside view of the Eggmobile itself. Slotted floor with wire chicken mesh underneath it to keep predators from coming up but enough mesh to allow airflow, let some of the manure fall through. You have the metal nesting boxes in the background. You do have to access these from the inside of the tractor. You can't access it from the outside. This is the main door here for human and I guess it's sometimes some ventilation access. On the other side, you have the ladder where the chickens can come in and out. But it's about eight o'clock in the morning right now and a lot of these girls want to get into the boxes and lay their egg for the day. It looks good. There it is, Charles Mayfield's On Pasture Eggmobile. It's brilliant, I love the look of this thing. Like I said, it's honestly one of the best looking Eggmobiles I've ever seen. I love the smart design to it. The chickens can hide underneath it for predator protection. You have everything self-contained in one unit so it makes it easy to move at night. Access is one thing, he said he wishes he had done a little differently, like you can't access the egg from the outside of the tractor, you have to go in it. So one thing you gotta deal with, but other than that, Looks great and it's working. We'll see if it becomes a bigger part of his business over time. If you want to learn more about Charles, visit him at the link below. And if you want to learn more about everything on grass, I actually do a podcast focused on raising animals on grass, pigs, chickens, and poultry. For more information on that, you can visit the link below or go to permaculturevoices.com slash grass fed. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll have more videos from Charles on his farm coming up. But until next time, be nice, be thankful and do the work.